All right, so we are so close at this point. At this point, you know, we've got our course model working. We've got our server providing data about courses properly. We have the client retrieving that information. We've got a new activity starting up. And what we really have to do at this point is, you know, there's a little bit left to do in figuring out how to get the activity that started to retrieve information about the course that needs to display. But what I wanna focus on here is how to make the screen look a certain way. Now, layout is one of these topics that, you know, the rabbit holes go down to the center of the earth. But it's also incredibly important. I mean, to me, you're not a real computer scientist until you've built something that somebody else has used. And the way people use things is through UI. So we're gonna just dip our toes in the water here um, with UI. We're not going too deep. And I'm gonna walk you through the process. Um, okay, so the first thing is uh, understanding sort of where UI comes from. And there are really two parts to this. Uh, we talked a little bit about this previously, but there are the activities, that's code that runs. And that runs when somebody clicks on something. There's code that runs that you know does something or whatever, or retrieves information from the network like we're doing as part of our activities. But there's also why things look the way they look. And this is known as layout. And in Android, these two things are typically separated. So the code in our courseactivity.java is responsible for the programmatic parts of the layout. But there's also this like, why does something look this way? Like what things are on the screen? And that resides somewhere else. So uh, let me show you where that is. Um, that's over in, I go into res layout. And if you remember, we looked a little bit at this when we talked about the main activity. There's something called main activity underscore main here. And you know, there's a couple of different ways to look at this, right? Um, this is what's called the XML view that shows you the actual sort of code that's used. And this is an example where, you know, just cutting and pasting, copying and pasting is not necessarily a terrible way to get started. So I'm going to call this activity underscore course. So this will be the layout for my course activity that I'm going to be working on. So I just cut and pasted. I want to add this to my project. I want to go back into that code view. Um, now what I'm going to do here is I took this uh, starter code, but I'm going to strip out most of it. And what I'm left here with is something that's called a linear layout. What is a linear layout? Sort of what it sounds like. It's a layout that organizes things from top to bottom in the order in which they appear. So if I go back and I look now at the design view, I'm gonna see that it's empty because I, the linear layout doesn't have anything inside of it. So what I'm gonna add here is what's called a text view. Um, and I'm gonna say, let's see here, uh, width will be match parent, height will be wrap content. These you could these you can experiment with to see what they do. And this is really all I need. When I add something to my UI, I need to tell Android how, what the size of this should be. And what I've done here is I said the width should, with the width should match the parent. That means it'll be as wide as the linear layout that is its parent container. And the height is gonna be wrapped content. So this is something where I'm gonna add text to it. This is a text view. It's a container for text that's part of the UI now. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's actually put some text in here uh, and we're gonna do just hello world. So this is like the hello world of layout. Now it's gonna yell at us about this because blah, 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 and I don't care. Uh, we're just messing around. So let's look now at the design view and see what this looks like. And you can see up here uh, in the corner, hello world, pretty cool. That's a little small. Uh, so, you know, what if I wanted to increase the size or whatever? Well, if I go back into the code view, there are all sorts of different attributes that I can use, right? So if I do like text size, and then I'll do 24, uh, 24 DP, I think that's right. What's it upset about now? Oh, fine, that's fine, I don't care. Um, and then if I go into the design view again, I'll see that the text got bigger, okay? So that's fine. So now, uh, and, and now let's, uh, now if I ran the app, which I can do, I could run the app right now. Actually, let's go ahead and do that just for fun. So I'm gonna run the app uh, in the emulator. Um, and I'm going to start up the course activity. Now I'm, I'm where we left off last time. So when I click on a course in the main activity list, it launches the course activity. But what you're going to see is that it's still blank. Um, so, you know, it's loading the list of courses. I click this still blank. So I don't see this hello world. And the reason is I have not told Android, I have not linked my course activity.java to this activity course XML. So that's the next thing I need to do is I need to tell when I load the course activity, I need to tell Android that I want to use this layout. Right now I haven't told it I want to use any layout and so it's just blank. Um, so this is a good place to go back to main activity and look at what main activity does, right? So you'll see right here, main activity, when it starts up, 
tells Android explicitly, I want to, uh, this is an approach called data binding. Now there's actually a bunch of different ways to do this. You can, you know, uh, you're certainly welcome to follow along with what I'm doing for this part of the, the project, but there are like a bunch of different ways to solve this. And all our test suites care about is that the right text is displayed. So you might want to find another way to do this. You might want to experiment. You might want to solve it once and then come back and try a couple of other different approaches. What we're using here is an approach called data binding. It's relatively modern, uh, relatively new in Android, and I think pretty sophisticated and powerful. And I think it's a nice way to do it. So I'll show you how to, how to use that approach. Okay, so I'm gonna cut and paste this over here um, into my course activity. And this is something that I do when the course activity starts up. So on, in the onCreate method, I'm essentially telling it what layout I want to use. And in this case, I don't wanna use activity.main. I wanna use activity.course. I just created this new layout. I'm also missing what's called uh, this binding. I need to import this binding variable from main activity. Uh, this stores, you can think of this as essentially storing a reference to that layout, which allows me to manipulate it um, in my activity code. Okay, so let's bring this over here. Um, this goes up here. And in this case, I don't want to use activity main binding. I want to use activity uh, course binding. There we go. Okay, and now I can remove, I can remove this unused import. There we go. All right. So now what's going to happen? I'm going to rerun this, and we're going to see that when I click on a course in the list, I get the right layout. So I'm going to open the layout that says "Whole Hello World," um, which is a good start. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start talking about well, what if I wanted the text to be a little bit different, right? Uh, okay. So I'm loading. I'm loading. I load this up. Uh, there we go. Okay. Cool. Now we're, we're we're sort of headed the way we're, we're headed there, right? We're headed where we need to go, right in the right direction. We have something that has some text in it, but the problem right now is that text is hard coded, and what you're going to do is you're going to create a course activity that displays information about a specific course. Now, getting that information into your on create into your activity is sort of uh, one of the challenges for this part of the MP. But what I'm going to do here is just show you how to manipulate the text that's shown so that you can do that when the time comes. So let's do that, okay? So I have this binding um, and it turns out, oh wait, I forgot. Something else I need to do before I get here, which is that this text view component, I need to give it a name. I need to have a way of referring to it because what I want to do in that code that I was just looking at in course activity is I actually want to say this text views content should change. And when you're done, you're gonna actually have several text views with different information in them, and you wanna make sure you have the right one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an ID, and it's going to, uh, let's see here, suggest this for me, and I'll call this uh, text view or something like that, right? And that's totally fine, right? You can call this whatever you want. Maybe I'll call this title, right? That's a little bit of a, uh, a hint for what you might do with this piece of information, what you might do with this text view. Okay, now that I have this, I can go over here, and I can say binding dot title dot, and now I have ways to, to manipulate this programmatically, right? So up until now, it just has this hard coded string, but now I actually have these methods that I can call to change the value, right? And so let's change it to foo, or how about hello foo? Hello foo, maybe, oh, come on. Hello choo choo, there we go, that's better, okay. Um, so now let me rerun the app. And so now the idea is the hard coded values, hello world, but when I create the activity, it grabs a reference to that UI component right here, binding.title.setText, and it uses this method to change the text that's displayed. And so instead of seeing hello world, I see hello choo choo. Okay. So again, we're, we're, we're leading you very close to, to the right direction here. We're not there yet, uh, you still have work to do, but this should give you an idea of how to get started. Okay, so from here, where, you know, and, and I'm assuming at this point that your course model is working properly, that your server routes are working properly, that your client get course method is working properly. Until you pass those parts of the test suites, don't attempt this part of the, 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 the project because it's, you're, you're, it's not gonna work. Um, once you've done those things, um, what you need to be able to figure out how to do is how do I get information from the main activity to my course activity so that the course activity can retrieve information about the course by calling get course. 
when get course returns, I have a course object. That course object will have fields in it, like a year and a title and a, a number and a description. And what I need to do is use those fields to modify the UI. So I know how to modify the UI and I have a little bit of information. I just have an example of how to create a very simple UI that just has one text field. All our test suites care about is that your UI displays the title and the description of the course that was clicked. That's it. As long as you do that, we're cool. The font sizes, you know, font choices, layout on the screen, stuff like that, that's all up to you. You just need to be, uh, display those two pieces of information. Okay, so you're off to a great start. Uh, this is a really cool part of, of this project is actually dealing with UI. A lot of people find this very frustrating. A lot of people are like, oh man, this isn't programming. But again, if you don't know how to do this, you will never actually be able to build something that people can use. Your code will always be trapped behind some, in some weird system that no one is uh, willing to, to deal with. And the fact is, you know this from experience, UI matters. The things that you use, Android Studio, your computer, the visual layout, the UI is incredibly important. And there's so much richness and really, you know, uh, some powerful design principles that come into play in this space. We're certainly not going to spend a lot of time on this. There are whole courses that you can take about effective user interface design, but you do get a chance to design a user interface in this class, which I think is pretty neat. And we'll continue to um, iterate on this over the next checkpoint. So good luck uh, with this. Good luck wrapping up uh, this part of the MP. Uh, you're doing great. Uh, if you need help, you know where to find us.